Hey, what's going on, everybody? It is Del Dre. You will know what time it is. That is right. Time for some more Fire Emblem Fates Lunatic Conquest. Be sure to leave a like if you do. Oh, yeah, by the way, you didn't think I forgot to say that, did you? You didn't think that wasn't on purpose or anything, did you? No, no, no. You guys were part of a social experiment and you didn't even know. And I have to say, tisk tisk. <laughs> Ah, oh, whatever, even if you don't, you're gonna click the next one anyways. Yeah, I said it, what's up? <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. I guess I'm in a better mood than I probably should be. Uh, right now you are seeing what should have happened last time, honestly, more or less. Uh, you'll see in a few seconds, but it's gonna be like 77 times 2-ish on Takami or something like that. So yeah, that's pretty good, that's pretty good. Before we actually begin this part proper though I did want to extend my thanks to everybody who kind of just reached out and sent their condolences and uh, I know that might sound like weird for people who don't have pets or for you know people who've never really had an animal or anything like that uh, but this dog was uh he, we had him for like 15 years so we've had him for about half of my life actually more than half of my life so it, it was it, it threw me for a loop to be sure um I did, I did actually stop the recording for like two hours, so you guys probably wouldn't have noticed that quite as much, I guess. Uh, but I, I convinced my sister to bring El Doggo over one more time, just because like, I, I don't know. Just because I guess I get sentimental about those kind of things, but it, it, it was nice at the very least. I, I honestly didn't really know what was wrong with him to begin with, because I didn't, like, I didn't, I wasn't living at home, so like... It was kind of news to me, very shocking to be honest. I just kind of assumed that he was old, but no, he was he was like undergoing heart failure basically, and it wasn't total heart failure at that point yet, obviously. Uh, but it was it was getting to the point that he really didn't have too much longer to go, honestly. Uh, but I guess I, I guess it helps that it was the right decision, if that makes sense, because. Uh, I actually had a grandmother pass from like the same condition and I, I just know that he had to be in like a ton of pain. I He had to be, there was there was no way to know that of course, <laughs> like I said he was a really good dog. He didn't whine or anything like that, even even in his last days, so he, he's definitely a fighter, but I, I think it was the best decision and I guess it helps in that sense because I, I guess it helps me rationalize it a little bit I guess. But it's definitely going to be a lot quieter when I go home from now on, I'll say that. Now, as for, uh, as for that last video, there was one other thing that I did want to clarify. This horrible looking move that I made where I threw a hand axe. So, I, this might seem uncharacteristic for me, but really it wasn't at all. And there, there's like math behind it. It might be on screen. I might choose to explain it. Yeah, we can just explain it. So, the, the reason that this was my best move, right, is because, uh, you can't forget that I still missed an 85 here. So, no matter what, the worst chance of success for that series of moves is still 85%. But in reality, it's actually much higher. It's like a 95% chance for everything to go my way when all is said and done because there was the 85% chance for me to hit. Then there was a 100% move that would always hit. So again, we're already at 85% chance for this to work out. But then we have a third attack that I got to take. It's not that my chance of uh, success went down. It actually increased by taking this third attack because it's basically a saving throw. That's basically all it means. That I now get one more chance to kill this guy. Could have killed him in two attacks, but because I needed three... We're not rolling an 85 and a 100, we're now rolling an 85, a 100, a Dragon Bank, and a Critical Hit, any of which, uh, any combination of the two would have killed. Any combination of the two would have killed, so, in reality, despite the fact that that move might look a little bit confusing, it actually makes perfect sense. It actually makes perfect sense, and I didn't really explain that, I, I, I kinda wanted to though, cause I feel like that one might have gone over some people's heads. And it sure would be a shame if somebody decided to come at my neck and not understand the map behind that or something like that. God, imagine how silly you would look. Imagine how imagine how silly you would look being that wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's why everybody can get it today. Everybody can get it today. These hands are way to eat for everyone. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm just messing around, obviously. I understand that that's not a move that everybody would immediately understand. But hey, I don't want to hear anybody say I make trash plays. <laughs> Let's just go ahead and forget about this move entirely. <laughs> if we just delete this move from the last <laughs> the last playthrough, I think that uh, I think that we did pretty good. And I also got the gold as well, the 10,000 gold. It was really, really easy to do that once I realized how the stairs work <laughs> because I'm trash. <laughs> but if not for that, we could have easily gotten all the treasure on the first time. The only real difference here is that now uh, Left Slow is paired up with Mozu. I don't know if we're at that point in the footage yet or not, but Laszlo is paired up with Mozu. 
Niles is one space to the left of the staircase, and that's going to allow us to hit both of the treasure. And of course, Leo here can still just blow away Takumi. Again, I, I'm not looking at the footage. I, I have no idea if I edited it or not. Maybe not, honestly, because it took like seven minutes to beat the map again, which is another beautiful part about having a strategy the first time. Yeah, there's really no reason to change up what I did if I know it worked the first time, you know? So I don't have to second guess myself and basically replay the entire map or rethink everything because if it worked, it worked, you know what I mean? Aside from that, I did see another comment that said, um, that said they might, uh, with their situation, have a little bit more trouble with this map than I did. And that's true. Like, I'm not, I'm not debating that. I'm sure that they, they honestly, uh, would have had more trouble than I did. Of course, I have a lot of flyers and that does obviously influence that chapter quite a bit by helping me get everybody across the chasm immediately instead of having to ferry people over one at a time. But I did want to mention the fact that Leo can actually clown Takumi from base. So he has 20 magic at base level, right? So if you if you give him the lightning, now we're at 21. We give him the rally magic, we're at 25. Uh, let's say we had Odin, he's a sorcerer now. And we have C-Rank with uh, Leo. So now we're at 31. Tonic and Messal, we're at 35. His Malefic Aura, we're at 37. The dang old, what was it? With Weapon Rank, we'd be at 39. Plus one from Weapon Triangle if we have at least A rank. All right, and there's also a Spirit Dust. Yeah, if you gave him the Spirit Dust on top of that, it would hit 42, the magic number. So even without leveling up Leo a single time, uh, if that map is difficult for you, and you should happen to have Odin at least level 10, uh, I guess it doesn't have to be Odin specifically, obviously, right? If you're playing with growth rates, your chances are only even better. But with all those things combined, on top of giving him at least one spirit does, Leo can just instantly kill Takumi from base level. So that strategy will work for anybody regardless of anything. And even if you didn't have the spirit dust, you can also just buy one from the staff store at this point. So I think that's really cool. They they must have known, right? They, they must have intended for Leo to be the hardest of counters for Takumi. Because he can just do it. He can just do it at base. And that's really cool. I think that Conquest is a fantastically balanced game. I really do. It, it really does say a lot that even the worst units in this game can fulfill some sort of purpose. You know, like... I'll, I'll give you an example. I recently was debating somebody on who the worst unit is, right? So maybe you guys want to weigh in on this a little bit. We were talking about Odin versus Mozu. I say Mozu edges out Odin slightly. Slightly. Uh, the argument was basically this, in case anybody is curious. I say that because it's really easy to train Mozu in Chapter 10, she can pretty much catch up for free. Uh, the other person brought up the fact that Odin makes for an interesting vantage nose for us to tank, which is, it's true. It's true. But I think that it's also worth pointing out that that costs 4,000 gold to do. Odin can't get his horse if you do it. And also, nobody else can really use the nose for us to, so it's actually more expensive than buying the heart seal for Mozu. But then again, it's also, it would be unfair for me to not mention the fact that by giving her the heart seal, that means that Jacob or Corin go, don't get the heart seal. Even Elise, honestly, is probably more suited to getting that heart seal than Mozu in terms of like efficiency but I think it's an interesting question really between the two of them who would be worse because honestly they can both do things you know what I mean this isn't Wendy this isn't Sophia both of these units can kick a severe amount of ass and as much as I've been given Odin crab again he is still leveled up exactly as many times as Camilla Camilla's got 15 levels and I think that Odin has gotten 15 or even 16 levels to his name so he might have even leveled up more than Camilla and I, yeah, sure, I don't remember what it was that he was doing, but he was doing something. He had to be, otherwise he would not be level 6 as a Swordmaster. So I just think that that's such a huge testament to the quality of Conquest, because at the end of the day, even if we're talking about the worst of the worst, we're still talking about utility and one-round KOs, you know what I mean? <laughs> also, something else about this game that I really like is the fact that stats really don't matter that much. Like, I mean, they matter a little bit, obviously, right? But... Uh, to go back to that Leo example, he can clown Takumi from base. Because in this game, you can swing your stats very, very wildly at the drop of a hat. Right? How hard would it be to stack 8 speed on somebody instantly, right? So he, this, is how, this is how hard it would be, okay? We got Rally Man, there's 4 speed. Uh, 2 from Atomic, 2 from the Mess Hall. There's 8 speed that I could give to anybody at any time. Just, just like that. I could just do it, you know? So I think that in that sense... Uh, despite how I might have felt about this game at the beginning, I think that actually the whole fact that stats don't re-roll themselves on Lunatic, uh, that is to say the stats that you obtain when you level up are fixed, 
I think that actually works out very well because it doesn't matter that much, actually. I thought it did. I, I certainly would have told you at the beginning of the game, oh no, you'll definitely get screwed if you get bad level ups or da 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 da. And I mean, yes, that did happen to me with Jacob without a doubt. But for the most part, for the most part, you can just fix yourself up by like the five or six different ways that this game allows you to do it. If I worried about speed specifically, I could even get Laszlo in on that for an extra plus one, and that's before pair ups or anything like that. So realistically, I can swing a stat about 15 points in any direction if I want to. And that doesn't even count for like uh, uh, surges and stats because you guys did explain to me the whole birthday mechanic. So if it were somebody's birthday, then I could give them like 19 speed without a single level up. Without a single level up, I could do that. And that's just crazy. That is just crazy. But I think it goes a long way to make everybody kind of good, you know what I mean? Uh, that said though, uh, we really only have Selena and Silas that needs to be done, I think. We could we could probably do Elise and uh, Leo. I actually did read a little bit of Leo's supports, and the one that he has with Elise is sort of interesting because it gets into that whole concubine wars thing, which I, I actually thought that was just a Camilla exclusive thing, but I guess Elise talks about it too with Leo. So Leo's actually a part of that whole thing as well, from what I understand. But... I don't know that they will ever get to that point in their support, so I don't know if it's worth it or not, really. All right, let's do it. So I, <laughs> man, I really hope that I can get Zobi though. Having a decent paladin on the final map would be really nice, in all honesty. And I think that the child units just start getting really, really broken right about now. So uh, I, I also think that because I got a little bit more experience on Elise when I replayed the last map, we should be able to get Ophelia on the next part of this. And I guess we can just go from there. Now, what did Selena sound like? Probably pretty bitchy, right? <laughs> hey, you came. I was sure you'd chicken out and stay home. Trust me, there are a lot of things I'd rather be doing right now. But I don't back down from a challenge once I've taken it. Well, you talk big, at least. Okay, the first event starts right here, right now. First event? This isn't something we can settle now and get on with our lives. Of course not. A standard competition goes for three rounds. Oh, that's new to me. But if those are the terms of our duel, fair enough. Say, aren't you like a level one bow knight? Shut up, Silas! The first event, practice swings. The rules are simple. We keep taking swings, counting together, and the first one to tire out loses. Huh, I was bracing myself when I heard you say it's simple, but it really is. Of course it is, why wouldn't it be? There's nothing complex about working hard. You put in the effort and you get the reward. Don't you even know that much? God, this is first grade, shut up! Well, when you put it that way, I guess I agree. Good, now hurry up and get ready. Silas has got this. You got like 10 levels on you, bro. And go! One, two, three, 446,800, wait, 627. You're pretty good at this. 628. You haven't even seen me at my best. 629. If it gets too rough, give up. I won't judge that much. 630. Stop joking. You'll make my sides ache. 631. It was worth a try. <laughs> they're just gonna, they're just gonna go at it, I guess. All right, that's how that goes, I suppose. Yeah, I don't see myself taking advantage of the rest of those supports. I honestly don't. I don't. Yeah, I really don't. Now, somebody said that they felt like supports were more uh, to do with the relationships rather than the actual revelations that you get out of uh, reading them, and uh, that's cool with me. <laughs> that's cool with me, man. Everything that I'm saying here is my opinion. I don't, like, like if I stop to say that every single time, if every single time I said anything, I clarified that it was just my opinion. Imagine how much longer these videos would be. I already talk too much, and like, <laughs> imagine, imagine this instead. I, it's in my opinion that I talk too much, and it's in my opinion that this, and my opinion that that, and it's ah. Oh. <laughs> so yeah, feel free to disagree with anything I say. Feel free to disagree with everything I say. Hey, <laughs> everybody's got an opinion. That's cool. That's cool. I, I just kind of fall in the school of why not both, honestly. If you read something like uh, Lucius and Renault from Blazing Sword, I think that that's a good example of a support that gives you both, honestly, because we learn about the relationship that Lucius and Renault have, where uh, Renault almost acts as if he's like this father figure or like this go-to guy for like uh, emotional support, I suppose, because he's a bishop, right? That's what they do. They listen to your troubles, and Lucius goes to him to do just that, and we learned that in the first support. In the second support, we learned that uh, Lucius's father was killed and he, he like keeps the dagger right he keeps the dagger that the murderer used to kill his father and in that support we learned that uh, Renault recognizes this dagger very clearly 
very clearly he knows that something's up. So there, there's sort of this intrigue, right? Because we don't know exactly what it is that Renault knows. We can we can take a guess probably, but it's not explicitly stated. Only when you get to A support, then it's finally revealed that it is in fact Renault who killed Lucius's father all along. And yet. We didn't sacrifice their relationship in all of this either because we learned how empathetic Lucius is as a person because he forgives Renault despite the fact that he outright admits that he was the one that killed his father in cold blood. And we learned about Renault too and we we learned about we learned about his motivations as well uh, in that he used to be like this rogue type character who just really only thought of himself and he was really only concerned with finding his friend uh, Kishuna I think, right? Isn't Kishuna the person Renault was looking for? I honestly can't remember. It's been a while. But I... Uh, for the kind of supports I'm hoping for, I would I would really rather err on the side of that. Not to say that the supports can't be funny, like take any support with Sarah where it's just like the dude trying to dodge her for like three supports. <laughs> Every support she's in can be summed up like this. Oh shit, it's Sarah, time to get out of here. <laughs> Every single one. And they're still hilarious. So I, I don't mind supports like that either. I don't think that every support needs to be profound. I just hope that there's a good amount of them. That's all I'm saying. Now, chapter 24. The Norian army breaches the Hoshiden capital. The dude is distressed by Iago's cruelty, but must still hurry to the throne room. Enemy forces block the way again for chapter 24. Now this one, I do know that people are mixed on this one. And I'm going to be up front. I liked this one the first time I played it. I'm probably going to like it right now too. Uh, we can talk about what probably splits people when we get into the map. And I can only talk from like anecdotal evidence. I can't speak for everybody, obviously. But I could probably take a pretty good guess about what people don't like. Here we are, the Hoshinan capital. What a long journey it's been. Truly. Yes, but soon this long ordeal will finally be over. If we can take control of the capital and seize the throne room, victory will be ours. Azura. Azura. Are you okay with that? Hmm? Why do you ask? Well... We're about to conquer the place where you grew up, the castle that you called home. If this is too much for you, I'd understand. You can leave the fighting to me. If you need to go, go hide somewhere safe until our work here is done. No. Thank you, my friend, but I'm afraid I can't do that. How would you complete this chapter without a dancer, after all? Oh, that's a good point, yeah. I didn't side with Nord just to lose my nerve and turn tail at the pivotal moment. I told you once, and I shall tell you again. I'm with you until the bitter end. Ending this war will benefit us all, even the kingdom I grew up in. This is what I need to do, not just for you, not just for the world, but also for the Hoshiden siblings I love so dearly. Which is why we're gonna skewer them. <laughs> this is what I believe with all my heart. It is why I'm able to bear this burden. Azura. Hey. Speaking of our Hoshinan siblings, we never did find him. <sighs> You're right. I don't know what to think. It's too much to process right now. <sighs> Poor Takumi. Our troops made a thorough searching of the area, but didn't find a thing. Nothing. Not even a single clue as to where he might have gone. It's as though Takumi just vanished. But I know that's not possible. <sighs> we should probably keep this from Sakura. She has enough to deal with at the moment. Yeah. Yes, I agree. There will be plenty of time to further break her heart later. <laughs> Listen. Dude, I must speak with you. Oh. Let me guess. Is it time? Mm. We have received our orders from Father. We are to invade the capital immediately. Please prepare your troops and yourself. Understood. Understood. So as the chapter were, uh, title would imply, no doubt we'll be kicking Hinoki's ass. And it's going to be more ridiculous than you think because our intro cutscene is just great. <laughs> it really is. It really is. It's a sight to behold. It's them. God's room with their truth. And Orient Army is headed this way. <laughs> ah, they're so frightening. <laughs> God, I really got to turn my headphones down because these girls, man, when they scream, it kills me. Sakura is like, man, <laughs> triggering my tinnitus here a little bit. They're so frightening, like an army of reapers out for blood. Hey. Look, Princess Traitor is marching with them. Shame on her! <sighs> uh, tough crowd. I see. How dare you show your face here after what you did to Queen Makoto? <sighs> My husband died in that explosion, just like our queen. Monsters, all of you. I must stay strong. <sighs> Filthy street rats, out of my way. <sighs> ah! <laughs> Iago, goddammit. <laughs> One less blethering fool in the world. Rest easy, lady dude. I shall personally destroy anyone who dares speak an ill word about you. <laughs> Just try and cross us Norians and watch the bodies drop. <laughs> no, please. Maybe this time it'll work. Patience, dude. King Garon is close behind. 
There's no telling what he'll do if he sees you standing up for Hoshinens. Now then. Ah, finally! Arrived at our new castle! And no guards to stop us! <laughs> they must be in defense mode! <laughs> I summon my guards in defense mode! Well. I'd wager something or other. Uh... I'd wager that all their forces are waiting inside. Hmm, so it would seem. This bodes well for us. Our army is large enough to surround the entire premises. We might be able to secure their surrender without raising a blade. I'm afraid that's not possible. Oh, I'm afraid that won't do, Lord Xander. What? Pardon? Let me explain. This is our chance to finally eliminate those pesky Hoshidin insects. They don't deserve the honor of a clean and quick surrender. Besides, so long as they live, those who follow them will never stop fighting. Now is the perfect opportunity for us to kill their royalty and stake our claim. So I guess that is the justification for why we're not using Sakura as a bargaining chip, but if that's the case, why is she alive at all? Because it doesn't seem to me that we would be able to convince Garon to both keep Sakura alive and then also not take advantage of that, you know what I mean? Because it seems like the only way we could convince him to stay his hand would be if there was something in it for him. But keeping her alive without using her is totally worthless from a tactical advantage, you know what I mean? So it, is, it seems a little bit inconsistent in that sense, I have to say. Uh, you already said that? For the glory of Nor, every last one of these Hoshinin royals must die, except for Sakura. You. That's low even for you, Iago. Your Majesty. Oh? Well, let's ask our king, shall we? King Garon, your majesty, what do you think of my plan? May I proceed? Do as you wish. Kill them all. You are most I thought gracious. you might say that. Thank you, my liege. Father? Father? Well, then. Well, now that we've settled our differences, let's begin the invasion. My men will attack from the rear while Lady Dude's troops storm the front. Divide and conquer, as they say. What will you do? What say you, dude? Any objections? No. None. If this is what father wishes, then so be it. Oh. Ho, oh, Xander, hasn't your little princess grown so? How proud you must be. Now then, let's begin. My troops will meet up with yours in the throne room. Do try your best not to slip up and die on your own tears, will you? Ha 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 ha. I'm such an asshole. <sighs> Xander, what do we do? Hmm. I know. I don't like this plan any more than you do. But we must stay strong. If we falter now, the whole world will pay the price. Dude, Camilla told me you once asked her where justice lies. Yeah. Yes, she didn't have any more answers than I do. Justice is an illusion. <sighs> I'm not touching that one. Little princess, the sad truth is that justice is an illusion. A child's fairy tale. There's no light path that always leads to good, nor dark path that leads to evil. To believe that, to see the world in black and white, is missing half the picture. All that matters are the choices we make, especially the hard ones. Like which game to buy, for example. <laughs> but this, it's too much. Letting innocents die is a tragedy, but so is letting the chance for peace slip away. This is war. There's no such thing as a clean win when lives are on the line. Instead of clinging to a false sense of justice, hold strong to something true. The desire to do what you know is right and protect the ones you love. And the ambition to see your vision of a peaceful future through to the end. If we allow evil men to let their vision take precedence over our own, we will all lose. Remember that, and find solace in it. You're right, Xander. I know in my heart that you're right. Gods give me strength. Yeah, I'm not touching that. Nope, 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 nope. Already got people on both sides hating me. Oh, he doesn't love the game entirely? What, what an asshole. Oh, he doesn't hate the game entirely? What an asshole. <laughs> Uh, real talk though, I don't I don't care for that because it seems awfully preachy from a game that quite literally is very black and white. And that is my opinion on that. I, I really don't have anything new to add to that subject other than that, so... Yeah, no sense really retreading ground. I mean, you could probably find a million different reasons why uh, people that share my opinion think that that scene does not work very well for Conquest. This map, as the name would imply, Features young Hinoka, who is <laughs> she's definitely, definitely a lot stronger than I remember. Her. Oh man, 
Oh man, she drops a speed wing at least, so there is always that. The magic number for today is looking like 28 times 2, which is going to give us an attack value of uh, 54, right? Without even looking, Camilla can do that. <laughs> I assure you that she can. By the way, uh, in case anybody is curious, because I know this Camilla looks really good, right? This this seems almost unreasonable, so I thought, I thought I would check what her stats are compared to her averages. And yeah, this Camilla is a little bit blessed. Uh, so, here's roughly what she has. Right now, this Camilla has plus two strength. Oh, you thought there was more? No, 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 she just has plus two strength. That's it. That's it. Camilla's so broken. Uh, so let's go ahead and drop our scrubs, first of all. Dwyer, you out. Baruka, you out. Xander, you out. Xander, not really a scrub, I guess, but... You know what I mean. I need to get my supports going, honestly. Thinking about Yaoi thinking about it really badly wait 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 you know what I mean shut up <laughs> but I want the enfeeble though I I, I really kind of do because if I nail Hinoka with that it's good game uh, uh, also what I think is gonna happen here most likely than not is Hinoka's gonna screw herself that's kind of what I'm hoping for that's definitely what I'm kind of hoping for here if I had 12 movement it would be close enough if only that could happen somehow if only Hinoka were really dumb somehow, and didn't account for the fact that my flyers are way better than hers. <laughs> but if I put somebody like here, namely Camilla more likely than not, and if there was some way that I could get 12 tiles and not 9, because I'm about to give her the boots, most likely. Uh, the reason you would want the boots from the previous map is to probably throw them onto one of these Falcon Knights, in all honesty. Uh, because you need a 9 movement flyer by default, I do believe, to do the rescue skip. So I assume that you would throw the second pair of boots to one of these chicks, because they do have b rank and stabs. Uh, and they have pass, which is the important part here. They have pass, and they can use stabs. And realistically, the only other choice you would have for this would be, like, Nina. Well, actually, Nina can't do it as an adventure. Yeah, she can't do it as an adventurer, because she doesn't have the movement, I guess. Unless you save both boots for her, I suppose, but... Getting a little off topic. Bottom line, if you wanted to do the endgame rescue cheese, you need somebody with high movement and pass. This is where you get that ordinarily, though, because these guys come with it for free, and they're also really good units. So much to the point that I'm thinking about capping them anyways, just because, like, look at these stats, dude. That's insane, and they would also be only a few levels off from rally speed, potentially. Not that I really need that. We got rally, man, right? So why would I need that? But you have a few different chances to get one of those kind of flyers if the rescue skip is your thing. Now for these savages, no, these chieftain... Uh, again, Elise can just kill them all. <laughs> and that's exactly what we want to do, actually, because she is very, very close to level 15. She basically activates God Mode at that point, right? Because she's going to get five more damage. On top of hitting res, on top of just generally being pretty well statted in general, I can make her really strong if I need to, but I can also make her really fast via Odin. So we have options with her, and that's really cool. She's very flexible. Very flexible when it comes to magic, I'm finding. Uh, these guys have advantage, nothing really special there. Uh, these ones are a little bit more interesting. So I will say that um, when it comes to skills, right? Passives matter more. Like skills that will always take effect no matter what. Like breaker skills, that matters because that's going to change how you can fight these guys to begin with, right? Because you don't want to use a bow if they have bow breaker, naturally. So I will say that it's not as if... It's not as if there's no purpose to being aware of skills. It's just that... 80% of them or so really just don't matter if they're dead. Uh, somebody actually made a very good comparison to fighting games. I don't know if there's anybody who's really familiar with those, but there's a mentality in that uh, if, if you're facing, let's say, a zoning character, right? Characters that have a lot of range. Well, naturally, the best thing you could do is take away that advantage, right? Get up in their face. They can't use their best skill if you take it away by smart play, you know what I mean? Like, oh man, I, I don't really want to open this can of worms, but here's the one that I think that most people would get. So please don't tell me that it's not a fighting game. That's not the point of this, okay? <laughs> if you were playing Smash, right? Oh god, we've already done it. <laughs> if we were playing Smash, and you were fighting Link, your best bet would be to be in his face. Because the thing that he does is throw out a bunch of range crap. And yes, it's very true that that will most likely get you killed if you let him do it. The fact is, you don't have to let him do it, you know? And sure, a good player will sometimes be able to do it anyways, but we're, we're kind of we're kind of getting off topic. The idea is that instead of, instead of fighting the enemies on their own terms, you should try to take away all their advantages if possible. 
if possible, of course. Now, we don't really need anything special for these guys. I'm so sure that she can hit the, uh, what would that be? Uh, 41. She can easily hit 41. Easily. Because we do that. And then, with the mess hall on top. Yeah, I'm having to use the mess hall on magic a little bit lately, I've noticed. But, uh, for the most part, that should actually stop after this map. Because Elise is really why I'm doing that to begin with. And if she gets trampled, then it's like, whatever. You know? If she gets trampled, then I have no need for the mess hall magic boost. We have Setsuna and Azama. These are the two mini bosses for today. Uh, so I'm pretty sure that on hard mode he only has one hexing rod actually, but on Lunatic they said nope, nope, nope. You're gonna have to deal with two. So if you want to wait this out, half your units essentially. Well, how many units can we bring? I'm not entirely sure, but six units basically have to take a hexing rod if you're gonna try to stall it out. I really just wouldn't. I really just wouldn't. We also have these dragon fangs on the map. Dragon fangs. We have these dragon veins on the map as well, which slows enemy flyers. No, it actually slows all flyers. Excuse me, and speeds all infantry slash non-flying mounted units. So like ponies and whatnot, they all get the boost. And I believe it's a movement boost of three points. Correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe you see how that factors in here, but <laughs> yeah, you, you can hit it yourself and it'll have that effect. But if Hinoka uses it, it has the opposite effect, which we will see, no doubt. In fact, I, I think we have to. I think we have to do it that way. Now, the first time I played it, I actually did things the opposite way. And that's the thing about this map that I do enjoy. Uh, we can talk about that in a second. I'm just rechecking these stats. I'm not sure how many of these Onmi OG I really need to kill. Uh, the fact that these guys have Shuriken Breaker is pretty interesting, I suppose. Yeah. I'd rather have the slow kill these ones, though, if possible. Because he can do it. He can do it eventually. But he would need 30 speed, and I, I really have my doubts, man. I really do. He can't even do it if I... Oh my god, he's so slow. Now, Rally Man does magic, right? Oh, I didn't even... <laughs> okay, hold up. I didn't... I didn't convert him. You think Charlotte can persuade him? Uh, I, I say she can. I say she can do it. I say she can do it. Come on, Charlotte. Scary. <laughs> Uh, don't underestimate me. I really want to know what's going on in there. This may take a while. Maybe I should have bribed him. Let's bribe him. What? He takes so much. All right, so I, I guess we're waiting. We're waiting on Rally Man. What, Charlotte? You suck, man. What was that? What was that? I thought you were supposed to be good at this. That was your whole character. I thought. Or is he just too poor for you, huh? <laughs> God damn it, Charlotte. Okay, so I guess we're not getting Rally Man just yet. I honestly don't know what the mechanics of that even are, truth be told, so... That's uh, kind of a first for me as well. So that is going to make things a little bit more interesting now, isn't it? Because I'm not going to get that Rally speed for this map. However, I think we can more or less replace that with an inspiring song, I think. And with... But I really... They've got to be, like, one fight away. And the worst part is, I know Arthur himself is, like, one battle away. Or, like, one shield gauge away from being able to promote. But let's say I did this. I would have the 55 necessary via one strength tonic. And using the strength booster in the mess hall. But that's really not as good, <laughs> I have to admit. I really have to admit, that's not as good as just having Rally Man. I'm kind of curious about the mechanics of, uh, the present, so I'm actually going to look that up real quick. It actually doesn't seem like it's very well, it doesn't seem like it's very well documented. Now, what did I need to bribe him? Because I might be able to convert. Well, I'd only be able to get eight then, though, wouldn't I? Ah, I don't think I can get him. God damn you, Charlotte. So I guess that could take a while in theory. Like, I don't know, Azura needs to be up here somewhere-ish. And then Camilla needs to also be able to get up here somewhere-ish. So that means at that point, I need somebody else in range who can easily take out a Chieftain with life and death, which is literally everybody, honestly. Anybody at all can do that because of the life and death. They just need to be able to also take a 54 attack power hit, which, <laughs> that's a little bit harder. Yeah, that's a little bit harder. So basically, I need to be somewhere within this zone with Camilla before, before we can win. Which means that I guess if I center myself around this area, and it won't really matter if I get hexing rotted 
because Camilla could definitely still take a hit from Hinoka even if she did get popped. Uh, Setsuna seems like she would be a problem, but we're gonna wait for Hinoka to screw her, I think. <laughs> yeah, we've, we've got space to make that work, basically. But Hinoka's gonna screw her, most likely. Uh, we don't need to kill Izama. Yeah, we don't need to kill Izama, even though he's got some nasty stuff himself. And, uh, Hinoka has all of this crap, but... Mm, I guess Luna, in this case, in this one case, is a bit of a consideration, because... I am gonna be getting into her face... And Camilla will probably eat a hexing rod. I think this will be fine as long as Camilla can be danced for. And we also have a few, uh, a few flyers up here. I guess the other one can just be Lady Dude, right? Dude or Mozu even. It doesn't matter because again, this is a seas map, and you can fly over the cherry trees. So honestly, at this point, let's just try to let's just try to get as much experience as we can here. I guess. Uh, at least can murder those guys for me. I don't know exactly which enemies are going to be moving and whatnot. I know that sets in his group doesn't move initially. Which is going to come into play because I don't really want to mess with her too, too much. Now, if you really want it to be sweet, you should also give us plus two magic. Please. Please. Ha ha! Ah, Rez. That could be worse. We need the plus two, plus two, though. I think that that is just kind of a given because I also need to get another plus two, plus two from this place. Uh, so let's do that right now. By the way, I really, I really hate how expensive these stat boosters are. They really should not be 10,000. <laughs> they they really, really shouldn't. I understand making them more expensive than they were in Mystery of the Emblem, I guess, but... Ooh, no, no. That's a bad investment for most of these. Honestly, unless you really need it, but 10,000 is a... I guess I shouldn't say it's a bad investment, but it's a very significant one. Especially considering I can just buy a tonic for 150. And I, I know it's not exactly the same, of course, because you can't stack them in the same way, but... At the end of the day... 10,000 gold... In a game like this, where, where gold doesn't exactly come that easily... I don't think it's impossible, I think the game gives you enough, but I... I definitely think it's not so free that I can afford to throw away 10,000 on a stat booster. I don't understand why they're not all just 5,000 like the arm scroll. That seems like that would make a lot more sense, especially because you can only buy one at a time. And it's not as if this game is above giving you ways to boost your stats in other ways, so it just seems very strange that they're so expensive. Oh, and right, we have the boots. Uh, probably gonna give those to Camilla. Oh yeah, and before I forget, let me let me actually do this. That was almost horrible. Oh, thank you, Felicia. Yes. Uh, but before we do anything, before we do anything at all, where is build? And I guess the fire orb will do her. Yeah, we've got enough to make this work. So we're going to build the fire orb, and we're also going to upgrade it to level 3, which will come into play uh, after the next map, I guess, probably. I think this is as good a time as any, honestly, because I'm probably going to want her before chapter 25. By the way, is there, like, a statue I can make to boost Camilla's caps? Because she, like... <laughs> Yeah, I think the dude statue, actually. Yeah, if I build the dude statue and then upgrade it, I think that'll increase Camilla's stat cap. For strength, which I want to do because she's actually maxed out. Oh, it costs three? Yeah, I guess so, but if I... Yeah, at the start of the next one, then, I can actually bump up Camilla's strength cap by one. Which I need to do, <laughs> because she is already maxed out. Oh, let's give Camilla those boots. I can also give another pair to dude, but I think that Camilla makes a little bit more sense. Just ever so slightly. Actually, I'm not basing that on anything. I just feel like it'll be more useful to have two 9-move flyers than one 10-move flyer. Especially when one of those 9-move flyers is Camilla. Okay, so actually... Actually, so I looked it up, and... <laughs> the Dragon Veins on this map actually give you 4 movement, and not... 3, like I thought. So we're actually gonna go ahead and forge this... Brontax all the way up to plus 3, which is about as far as it needs to go. Well, it actually gets a point of crit at that point, which is totally useless. <laughs> yeah, bronze weapon still cannot crit, but if we do this... Thank you. If we do this, this could actually let us do some pretty funny stuff here. And uh, did I actually give the goddess icon to Leo? Because if not, I'm about to give it to Camilla, if only because... Uh, that'll give us a little bit of hit. I don't think that Camilla... Uh, not Camilla. I don't think that Hinoka gets the gate bonus because she's flying. And that would be kind of bullshit if she did because I'm going to tell you right now. I don't get the gate bonus if I'm a flyer. But... Uh, that'll help us be more accurate with Camilla in general, which is always good. And in fact, let's go ahead and just go all in. 
Honestly, get her the uh, luck tonic and the and the dangle skill tonic. <laughs> I'm definitely not trying to overcompensate for last time. Why would you say that? <laughs> I can't believe how lucky Leo was last time, but I I think we can do better than that on the whole. So let's go ahead bump up Camilla as much as possible here because we can actually move 13 tiles and not 12. Uh, when all this is said and done here, uh, I just need Camilla to be right here with dude right behind her. That's like the only thing that I need to do now. I already figured out how I'm going to do that because honestly, um, well, I, I wanted to kind of show you guys why I'm not doing the rescue shelter thing every single map because when you do, the game actually snaps in half and I think this is as good a time as any to demonstrate that, I suppose. Now, if Elise wants to play along, we should still be able to get trample on her by the end of this map regardless, but, well, if I, if I understand this at all correctly... If I've counted my tiles correctly, basically, which is probably why I didn't show too much of that, because it is literally just counting tiles in this case. Uh, not really too much to consider as far as combat goes. At least we'll one round those guys on the left, and Camilla can one round the boss. Although I am one point short, we'll see how I get around that in a second. So, victory condition is seized. Now, if I counted this correctly, we just need to be right here. I'm actually going to switch over right now. I guess we can just explain it as we go, because it's mostly... Uh, like I said, it's mostly counting tiles here, um, and I thought this might also be a good map to do it on because, like, I do know that this map is a little bit infamous for some people. I, I have to be perfectly honest, though, I never really found this one to be too much of a struggle. Like, even the first time I played it, I didn't think that it was all that bad. Uh, but to each their own and all that. Now, with Leo, we're gonna take Niles and drop off... Uh, we're gonna drop him off, basically. Uh, Xander can shelter Azra up. Like so. Put your girl Moser right there. She's holding on to the slow. She's got to be for this. And I, I also brought Baruka again. Because just simply having another fly here makes all the difference in the world. And we're going to dance for Mozu. Like so. She can move all the way up here. Drop the slow. That's looking good. Uh, Don't forget to rally Elise here, Deltray. Come on now. <laughs> she wouldn't be able to kill without it. Because she's actually paired with Felicia over Odin. Because I actually need Odin to... Help me double Hinoka, basically. Um, looking good, looking good. So, at this point, I could... No, 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 I'll unpair Baruka. That's the smartest thing to do. That's right, we want to unpair you so that Azura has somewhere to go on the next turn. Gunter can chill right there. He's holding on to Odin. And uh, are you ready for the only enemy phase? <laughs> oh, my. It appears your little sister has brought friends for supper, Lady Hinoka. Dude! <laughs> God damn it, that. that's going to hurt. Are we gonna fight? Uh -huh. Yes, I will not let Castle Shir Shirasagi God, <laughs> fall even to my own sister. Don't let even a single person breach this throne room. If I can't at least stop that, I'm a sorry excuse for a princess. I see. I see, sure. Well, okay, I'll do my best. <laughs> Allow me to help. We will protect you, Lady Hinoka, with all the strength we possess. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought I'd hear you speak so gravely, Azama. Whatever happens, I'm proud to fight with the two of you by my side. Thank you, Azama, and you, Setsuna. Thank you for everything. And don't even try to die on me. We're in this together. So this is... <laughs> just watch this. It's not what you think it's going to be. <laughs> I spent my whole life looking for you. Yep. Finally, I found you. God damn it. Why did they put that in the game? Who approved that? <laughs> Who said... <laughs> Hinocopter! <laughs> okay, Elise, come on. No, I'm not taking that. I'm not taking that. She could have killed all of those guys. That's a little 90, like, 8. So thank you, Elise. Thank you so much. Now, somebody did actually explain how the Fates RNG actually works. And I was pretty close for mental mapping it, honestly. 70 is about 80%-ish. Uh, because Elise screwed me. <laughs> what was the chances of that, man? I'm not taking that, by the way. I'm definitely resetting so she kills all of them like she should have. But... Because, uh, because of the way the Fates RNG works, uh, just understand that it is still sort of like true hit, so it is skewed to be where uh, higher accuracy attacks are still more accurate. But what makes it not true hit uh, by technicality is that with the true hit system, low hits are also lower than displayed, but that's not true here. Uh, in Fates, everything below 50% is as displayed. And there was a whole formula for uh, how they work above 50%, but there was also just a nice handy dandy table. So if anything, I'll just link that. Uh, but thank you to the person that 
brought that up. In fact, <laughs> aggro dude. Like, for some reason, every time he posts a comment, uh, YouTube just puts it in my spam filter. I don't know why. <laughs> what are you doing on other videos, man? I just gotta know. I have just got to know. Uh, but we want to get Odin all the way over there, which we can very easily. Now with Baruka, we're gonna pair these two up and give Azura over to Mozu. I'm gonna rally now with Laszlo of all people because that actually matters a lot. It matters a lot, in fact. So we can do one of these. Transfer on over. Wait. And bring, uh, what's his face? Uh, he's on it. We can bring him all the way over here. I'm just doing this for the luck, really. I don't need any extra damage on anybody. And obviously we're using physical weapons. But hey, 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 look at that. 69 times 2. <laughs> I'm 8 years old. But... Uh, to go back to the Fates RNG thing, this is actually closer to like 76-ish times 2. Uh, and for the trade-off of not playing a map, if it were too hard for some reason, I don't think that that's a bad trade at all. I really do not. So, Camilla, let's go. I don't care who you are or who you're with. I will not let you pass. Oh? Did she forget who I was? <laughs> Did you remember how this went the first time? Now we did dodge a hexing rod, but as you can see, it literally does not matter. I refuse to accept this. Yeah, as you can see, we could have easily taken a hit regardless, so it's whatever, really. It's up to you, Nariyama. Please protect our home. So, uh... <laughs> I hope you didn't think this chapter was going to last too long. I kind of made it seem like it was maybe going to, but then I noticed that I could just do this. <laughs> So, uh, my bad on that, but this is why we don't shelter rescue skip, because if not, then things like this happen. <laughs> and Leo Borderline O-Code this guy, even without the, uh, even without the boost, and we have 90% accuracy, so I mean... <laughs> right? So, uh, yeah, I'm so sure Elise could have hit 15 had she done her job, because <laughs> I could have still used her right here to pick one more up. So that was a 90, a 95. Yeah, it was a 95 because we had the rally luck. So uh, thank you, Elise. <laughs> kind of curious as to what a 95 plays out with uh, in terms of the Fates RNG. But uh, you can see where this is going, I think. <laughs> oh. Magic, really, Azura. Really, Azura. Sees. <laughs> let's fix that, though. Uh, yeah, let's fix that. Let's get those levels for Elise because we want those. We're about our experience out here, man. God, Azama is all off on that today. He hasn't landed a single time. Yeah, you know, getting C rank makes us even five points more accurate, so that's even less likely. Although, I guess we missed before we got to C rank, so there's that. Alright. And this should put us within range to kill literally anybody and get a level up. I think. And since Elise has a million movement, as she too is a flyer... By the way, if I didn't, like, specifically clarify what's going on there... Uh, when Hinoka hits the Dragon Bane instead of us, which for some reason she is dumb as hell and does on the first turn. Uh, when she hits the Dragon Bane, okay, all flyers get four movement, and that includes hers as well. Which is why it could potentially be dangerous. Uh, however, if you don't have the flyers like I do, uh, you can take advantage of the Dragon Banes yourself, which will give all grounded units plus four movement. Which is honestly just as well. The first time I played this, uh, that's what I ended up doing a little bit more. I used my ground units to clear out some of these guys, and then by the time Hinoka hit it again, I just so happened to be in range with Camilla, and then kind of did what I did right there. Uh, so let's just get this. Ooh, can we do better than that? Uh, I really don't think that we can, can we? Unless you... No. Oh, air superiority, but of course, but of course. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to do a little bit better, but if we can hit the 77... I knew he had bandage, but it's like, whatever. Yeah, so now she should, in fact, have trample. Yeah, she does. So now we can get Ophelia. Now we can get Ophelia. See, that's why I'm not really too, too worried about the experience on this map. Uh, because we are still doing the child paralogs, technically. And just because I know some people are curious, uh, we can just go ahead and do whatever ones we don't get. After the fact, so after I beat Endgame, we can just do all of them, basically. Uh, I don't want to do the ones that I don't earn before that point, though, because that is still technically giving me experience. So it only seems fair that I only do the ones that I legitimately obtain, you know what I mean? Uh, but 
I figure we might as well just go ahead and do all of them as long as we're gonna do Ignatius anyways, right? And really, Hinoka is the only truly trying part about this map. Of course, as you can see though, as you can see, if you let her do the Dragon Band herself, and you happen to not have too many flyers, then this becomes a mess. Which is, at, at that point, what you want to do is something similar to how we did the Emnet Staircase, right? Where we were we were constantly slowing the enemy down throughout the entire map. And you can do something pretty similar with these Dragon Banes. After all, Hinoka doesn't use it until the end of the turn. Uh, so these guys didn't technically get the boost right away. They don't get it until their next move. So you have plenty of time to hinder them if you want. But you do have to be proactive about it. Uh, they come for quite a while as well. They come for quite a while as well. Did we already do our buffs and whatnot? Yeah, they come for a very long time, so... Yes. <laughs> so you do have to at least consider that part of this map. Um, as far as as far as far dealing with Inoka, though, I kind of do recommend that you blitz it either with uh, non-mounts, or I, I should say either with infantry and or grounded units, or use the flyers like I did. Because her little area here does have a lot, uh, a lot going on. And of course, if you choose to use the Dragon Veins yourself, that does, however, buff all of the grounded units as well. Like Hinoka, not Hinoka, but Setsuna rather. Her group, uh, these chieftains and stuff, they can all run at you really, really fast if you do that. Your own flyers will be slowed as well. So that is something else to consider. But... Let's not forget now that the game still gave you a million and a half great mounted units that aren't flying, like Xander, uh, Leo. Uh, you got all kinds of infantry units as well that would just love that sort of thing, especially if you trained up like Arthur or something like that. Oh man, Arthur would love to have 10 movement. He would love nothing more than to have 10 movement. If he had 10 movement, by default, he'd be one of the best units in the game. Uh, I, what did I do differently here? <laughs> Why am I not killing this guy quite as hard? Did I not? Oh, I think I probably rallied Leo last time as well. That's probably what's going on. It doesn't really make any difference at all. None that I can see. Can you guys see the difference? Because I certainly cannot. I guess the difference is for accuracy, but whatever, man. So we killed that guy again. Uh, and Xander, by the way, in case we were wondering if he was still broken or not. Uh, as a Wyvern Lord on this map, he's actually sick because after a Rally Defense and a Tonic, he actually tanks, or all of these guys actually tank him. Like, this guy will tank, this guy will tank. Uh, these guys won't tank, I suppose, because they have a magic weapon. But all the all the physical weapons still just, like, basically tank because he can take away their weapon triangle. So they're going to lose two or three might from that. And then he has, like, 36 defense after a Rally plus a, plus a dang old... What's the word I'm looking for? Plus a tonic. And if you really wanted to, you could give him like a defense pair up on top of that. And so, uh, as far as defensive walls on this map goes, uh, he's very good. Like a great knight Effie or something like that. That would be pretty sick here because I'm I'm pretty confident that she would if like if you had trained her, she'd probably just blow away all of these guys uh, with a javelin. I think she could honestly do it. It seems in her character to be able to do that, so she can kill mages uh, pretty nicely. And then obviously, if she's a great knight, she can still use axes to get the same effect as Xander. So all these guys tinker, basically. Uh, Benny can do a similar thing. Uh, so keep that in mind defensively. Because at this point, you should start be getting some rallies. You should start getting some rallies, I would imagine. Not to mention Rally Man himself. Maybe you had some better luck than I did, and you could convert him very easily. But there's a few different approaches here. Uh, now, I, I, couldn't show the, I couldn't show the infantry approach either way, because I just don't have the correct infantry for that. I don't, I like, like I moved everybody over to flying classes basically. So for me to go about it that way would just be kind of silly. Honestly, I should, I, I feel that I should do this because it takes the best advantage of my units. And even if I didn't want to cheese it like that, I would still want Hinoki to help me out. Because I'm honestly more afraid of Setsuna than I am of like, these Kenshi. I don't know if I should be or not, but that's just how it is. And of course you do want to be quick with this last area anyways, because the longer you take within Izama's range, uh, the worse off you are, and he has a huge range on that Hexing Rod too, uh, but yeah, the longer you spend in this green zone, the worse off you are because, like I say, these flyers do come for a while. Hinoka is not afraid to use that Dragon Bane, and she can do it multiple times. Basically, it, it's like another take on anti-turtling incentive, really. It's a different take on the Endless Staircase, in my opinion, except this time the enemy is uh, using the gimmick against you as well. Potentially. Potentially. As you can see, it didn't work out for her at all. <laughs> But, oh, no, 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 
That was almost bad. See? But yeah, I like that map. I like that map. Uh, my first playthrough of that map didn't look anything like that. Well, it looked a little bit like that. The last section looked like that. But you don't have to do it that quickly, basically. You can take a little bit of time. You're not going to be screwed or anything. And if you take a little bit more time, you can honestly do it even better than that. Because then you don't even have to do, like, shelter strategies or anything. If you just take a turn uh, and deal with those two Kinshi Knights that are coming in hot, then it's like whatever, really. Because Hinoka's going to slow down sets in his group to the point that they literally cannot prevent you from doing that strategy because they're out of range. Yeah, there was really just no way for her to come out on top of that, <laughs> no matter what happened, really. I think it's a fair gimmick, though. It hits both sides evenly, and you have your choice in how you want to approach it. But I think that's the name of the game with Fire Emblem. Honestly, Fire Emblem games live and die by the quality of their choices, in my opinion. Uh, so the fact that there's two very opposite ways to handle this map is good, I think. <laughs> we didn't see it uh, in its true entirety, and I do understand why it could be hellish. But again, it's just an anti-turtling thing, man. You can't slow down. You can't slow down in the harder games in the series because that's... Just like New Mystery, okay? This game doesn't necessarily seek to deny you rewards. It seeks to kill you. Like, make no mistake. Let's not forget on the last map we watched Mozu take 30 damage in one hit. So, like, <laughs> this game definitely seeks to kill you. I, I don't think it's quite as bad because defense in this game can get a little bit ridiculous. Like I was saying, Xander can actually cause some of those guys to tank which you would never see in New Mystery, but most of your characters are in a very real position to die. And that's how this game tries to force you not to turtle. It tries to kill you outright. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna front on that, but that's the kind of difficulty I like uh, to each their own and everything, but I feel like that was the whole purpose of Conquest, you know? So if, if ball busting difficulty isn't your thing, uh, maybe check out like Birthright or something. I don't, like, I, I know I've given Birthright crap sometimes, but I don't think it's a bad game by any means. I really don't. It's not a bad game. It's not really what I'm looking for, personally, when I play these games, but in so far as gameplay, it's really it's really just a more refined awakening. So if that's your thing, maybe Birthright is more your game, but I love that kind of difficulty where the game just tries to kill you. So in that sense, I love Conquest, really. Drat, how could I lose our castle? I failed. Lay down your weapon, Hinoka. It's over. Come on. That was quick. Huh, if you're gonna kill me, just get it over with. I won't beg for mercy. All I ask is that you spare the lives of my remaining soldiers. Ugh. No, milady, you don't know what you're saying. Uh, so apparently, I I've changed his voice like three times, by the way. Uh, apparently, so... If you were to kill Azama and Setsuna, I think they die? Maybe, or was it just... I, I, I don't know, somebody, somebody, of course, had to point out specifically who it was, despite the fact that I said it was hyperbole, somebody had to say, no, no, Deltry, actually, <laughs> God, I love you guys, I love you guys so much, but you guys are so fickle sometimes, Fire Emblem fans in general, I love you guys, I really do, but when I said it was a hyperbole, did somebody really need to correct me after that point, <laughs> like, actually, you're still wrong, because, <laughs> because Simon didn't say, <laughs> That's basically what it is, trying to get me on some Simon Says bullshit. Oh, Simon didn't say Laszlo and Perry specifically. <laughs> I know people die in this game. I do. Okay. I do. But goddamn, guys. But I think that... I think that some of the retainers do die. Maybe these guys just didn't because, as I said initially, there's no death in Fire Emblem. Clearly these guys are alive, and I, I don't see why that would be my fault or anything, so... <laughs> uh, you don't know what you're saying. You're a princess of Oshido. You must not fall. Nope. Ah, uh, nope. You can't do that, Lady Anoka. If you die, I'll die with you. Huh? Azama, Setsuna, I need you to stay strong for me. No. I'm... I'm afraid I have no choice. Father would never allow an enemy leader to survive again. I'm sorry, but I must do what I must do. <sighs> I understand. Please make it quick. Yeah. Of course. Huh? <sighs> Yeah. Uh. Huh? Huh? She missed, and not by accident. But why? Why? Yeah, tell us. Why'd you spare her? <laughs> like, dude, come on. Dude! <sighs> Hinoka, my sister, listen carefully. As of this moment, you are dead to the world. Leave this place and do it now. I beg of you, take your retainers and find somewhere safe to hide. I hate to send you out unarmed, but I must ask for your weapon, quickly. I must have something to shoot father as proof that I defeated you. What's the meaning of this? 
What are you saying? You're really gonna let me go? Yes. Yes, I'm not my father, Hinoka. The last thing I want is meaningless bloodshed. I will not kill you nor your remaining soldiers, but you must leave now. How could this be? No, let me come with you, sister. I knew you were on our side. I knew it. If I explain things to Ryoma, maybe we can end this war before things go any further. <laughs> I can't let you do that. There's no telling what King Garon would do if he found out that I allowed you to live. So this kind of does fall apart with me, though, because are you seriously meaning to tell me that in Birthright we can kick King Garon's ass with Ryoma and Dude, but in Conquest it's somehow impossible? On top of having Xander kill the Broken, at least the Broken, like, it, it just doesn't, it just feels inconsistent. And I guess maybe in a sense that is fair because I'm, I'm sure that the routes are supposed to be mutually exclusive to some extent. So what happens on one does not necessarily happen on the other, that is the whole point. These are what-if scenarios, I acknowledge that, but still. What changed, man? <laughs> what changed? Uh, I know it won't be easy, but I need you to go far away from here. If you can just stay hidden until the war is over, everything will be okay. You don't have to die here, please choose to live. But... How can I run, when everything I hold dear is on the brink of ruin? Oh my... <laughs> oh my, what a spoiled child. She's I'll do it. <laughs> uh, what? Oh dear. Oh dear. How did my naughty little blade get so close to your vulnerable little throat? <laughs> if you even move a tiny bit, I may just slice it open like a ripe tomato. You. You're insane, you bitch. What are you doing? Well. Quiet, dear. You see my sister? Who is not yours, by the way. <laughs> I like how she just had to get that in there. Well, the sweet thing chose to spare your meaningless little life. It's rather precious. A supportive choice, of course, but only so long as you keep your end of the bargain. If you cause my darling little sister any harm, if you disobey her and refuse to run away, when you least expect it, my naughty little blade here might just slip, understood? Why do you gotta say it like that? <laughs> Aw, you always make that same frightening face when we speak. Remember how I kicked your ass last time to- Yes, I remember! Keep that up, and you'll positively terrify Princess Sakura when you see her again. What? Sakura is alive? <sighs> she is. And she will stay that way if you help me keep my sister safe. That's my sister, darling. Mine, not yours. Mine only. <laughs> In case you were keeping score. That's 2 0 oh, now. I know. Now be a good girl and go hide somewhere like dudes ordered you to. After all, how would young Sakura feel if she found out her sister was dead? <sighs> Fine, you win. I'll do as you say. I see. Wonderful. I'm so glad we had this little chat. <laughs> <laughs> you know, now that I'm up close, your face is rather cute. Oh, d come on, Camilla. Pick one. Somewhat similar to dude. Fully adorable and quite pretty. <gasps> what am I supposed to say to that? <laughs> How wonderful. <laughs> So she just hits on everything, apparently. Okay, cool, cool. Look at that, absolutely lovely. You even blush like dude. <laughs> um, Camilla? <laughs> what are you doing? Sorry, darling. Oh, my apologies. I got carried away. It seems like we must be going. Farewell, Princess of Hoshido. Hey! Dude, wait. You should know that Ryoma's waiting for you inside the castle. And like 50 ninjas as well. You said that you wish to avoid bloodshed, but I'm choosing to believe you. So whatever happens, don't kill him. Please find a way to spare my brother. We've already lost mother. We couldn't bear to lose Ryoma too. If he fell, it would tear the heart out of the kingdom. I couldn't survive that. Understood. You have my word, Hinoka. I will not take Ryoma's life. Probably. I swear on the Yato of Salvation that I will find a way to protect him. Thank you. Thank you, dude. Oh. Oh, one last thing. I know the awful things my kingdom has done to Hoshido and to your family. I know that because of those things I can never hope for forgiveness. But when all of this is over and peace has been restored to our world, I dearly hope that one day we can all come together as siblings again. Huh? Dude! I am so sorry. I'm sorry. Perhaps I should not have spoken. Feel free to cry and scream at me and to tell me that wish can never come true. But even still, I won't let go of that dream. I just thought you should know. Goodbye, dude. Lady Hinoka. Lady Hinoka, I'm truly grateful that you escaped that ordeal with your life. Let's go. Oh, it's time to go, my lady. If we stay here, they'll catch us for sure. Watch out for pitfalls. <laughs> yes, let's go. 
Sister, you're right about one thing. I can't forgive the Norian army. They started this war and they're winning it like cowards. They're all barbarians. Yet dudes dream of us all uniting as siblings in a world without war. Her wish is so earnest, so pure, I can't help but believe in it too. Ryoma, please don't hurt dude. Don't kill that lovely dream. Like he can. <laughs> Actually, he probably can. I have not been... I haven't been focusing on doing that because like... Well... <laughs> Well, let's actually just look at the map, maybe. <laughs> I'm kind of curious. Oh, right. Yeah, because I built the fire orb. That's right. So here's Flora. Oh, my God. I just got the joke. You build the fire orb to get Flora? Are you serious? <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> Yo. That's way funnier if you played Revelation. I'm not going to play Revelation. You couldn't pay me enough. <laughs> not with unit balance like this. But, yeah, you build the fire orb up, Flora shows up. She hasn't, uh, been able to get me out of her mind, apparently. That's always good. <laughs> but she is pretty good. Uh, as somebody brought up, I do think that Izana is probably the worst of the units that you recruit this way. But yeah, we can get Flora at level 11, and that's not too bad. Uh, I'm mostly looking at that staff rank. It might have been better to get her after this next one, but that, of course, would mean that I can't use her on the next one. Which I may or may not want to, because I do want plenty of staff bots. Most likely. I'll probably need it. Welcome to Ninja Hell! <laughs> Part 2. Oh, this is gonna be a trip, huh? By the way, because somebody was, like, kind of curious about how you would do this. Because they said, oh, don't, you know, don't... Don't play this any differently than you normally would. Uh, I'm not gonna play this differently than I normally would, per se. I'm just not gonna cheese Ryoma, because what it would come down to is this. I could buy another arm scroll for dude. I can use the one I have, I can use a Killer Lance, and I can destroy Ryoma. <laughs> so, which is more exciting though, honestly, right? Play the map, or just crit Dragon Fang Cheese. Which is what that amounts to. If you're, if you're like, stuck here, and you happen to have, like, a Lance using class, you basically can't lose forever, because a crit Dragon Fang will probably blow Ryoma away in one way or another. I do think that he does... He has something. No, oh, he only has resist status. For some reason, I was thinking he had a different ability. Uh, but he does not. So yeah, eventually you can just crit kill him if you're truly stuck. And as long as Corrin is strong enough to pull that off, then, you know, you don't have to do all of this. Uh, but this is where it gets fun because inevitable end. Status effects on enemies will accumulate. So what that means is if I get popped by a silver shuriken, uh, and I lose four speed, and then I get popped by another silver shuriken, and lose another 4 speed, I've now lost 8 speed. Uh, more importantly, arguably, would be the defensive implication. Uh, however... Yeah, actually, the speed is irrelevant. The speed is irrelevant, and I can already tell you this is well designed without looking at it, because none of these guys have steals, do they? No, none of them can touch my strength stat. Not a single one. Not a single one can touch my strength stat. If I Oko from the start, then I will Oko at the end. And since we've already said doubling these guys is not a good idea, I don't care what the wiki says. It's a terrible idea. As long as I can get by Inevitable End, we should be good. I say that, though, but there's also the Spy Shuriken. And, uh, this whole hallway. This is the Hallway of Death, by the way. Very real Ninja Hell, not clickbait. Uh... <laughs> okay. So that's next time. Anyways. All that said, that's going to do it for me. So, woo, thank you for watching. I hope that you enjoyed. Uh, remember to leave a like rating if you do. Let me know your thoughts below. <laughs> Either on this chapter or this upcoming chapter that's going to be a nightmarish. Oh, but we're not doing this next time, are we? <laughs> that's right. We got to get Ophelia. We got to get her. I guess we don't got to get her. We might get her. I don't know. I don't know. I guess it'll be a surprise. Maybe we do Ryoma. Maybe we get Ophelia. I guess it just depends on how scared I am. <laughs> Either way, I will catch you guys next time. See you then. Peace.